Hey everyone and welcome back. I am so excited another day, another activity, and today's activity is a fun new math game. Last week we learned go to the dump and this week we will be learning another fun math game to help us learn, grow, and master those skills and patterns. So, are you up for it? I know I am. But before we jump into our math activity, let's talk about our riddle. Today's riddle is a little bit of a thinker, but I'm not too worried about it because we got some bright people out there watching. So, what's our riddle? You can change me, make me, save me, and raise me. What am I? As always, at the end of our video, after we read our chapter book, we will figure out the answer together. So if you can't figure it out, no worries, I'm here to help. But don't slack off, keep thinking. All right, now let's jump right into our activity. I hope you guys are just as excited as I am to learn about our new math game. Oh yes, today we are learning how to play Shut the Box. Now, we're not gonna have the whole box, we don't have all the tiles, but we're going to do our best and try and make it a little bit more user-friendly for all of our elementary pals watching. So, how do you play? You can play with one person, you can play with two people, or you can play with a bunch. There's all different ways to suit, however, many folks you got playing. So, today we're gonna learn how to play by ourselves and head to head. It's pretty fun, I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. What we're going to need are a set of dice, so you're going to need two dice. You're going to need a piece of paper or an erasable board. I will be using an erasable board, and what we're going to do is we're going to write one through nine on there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. This is all I've got going on. This is all you need to do. And like I said, a piece of paper is perfect. So why are we writing down all these numbers? What is the point of this game? Well, I'll tell you. The point is to roll the dice and see what you get. Add them up. All right, so I've got a five and a two. Five and two, what do they add together to be? A seven. So I'm going to wipe away my seven. See? All gone because I've added up to it. I can't get it again. It is off the table for this round. Now, let's see what else I can roll. We'll keep going and I'll explain as we keep learning. All right, so now I've got a five and a one, which means we are one less than where we just were, six. I'll erase the six. The objective is to get as many erased as you can. Because once they're all erased, or all, if we were playing with the tiles, all the tiles would be down. It's called shutting the box. You get there though, it's pretty difficult. All right, so I've got four and three. So we can put down the four and the three because they add up to seven. Now, we can't put down the seven because we've already got the seven. If we were to get this number again, we would have to stop. We would cease the game because and we've already erased both of them. We've already erased the seven. So that's just where we would have to end it. But good news, let's erase them. Four and three. All right, guys, I got a good feeling. So I've got a one and a six. Oh no, there we go. We have to stop because why? Our seven, it's already down. So that means we're going to take the numbers we have, we're going to add them up, and that's going to be our score. So we've got one plus two, that equals three. Three plus five, what do we think that's gonna be? It's gonna be eight, great job. So now we have eight plus eight. Goodness gracious, do we know our doubles? Yes we do, it's 16. What is 16 plus nine? Well. If we know nine plus six is 15, we carry the one, we put the five underneath, what do we think it's gonna be? 25, so we scored 25, which is absolutely not too hot. You're trying to get all of them down. It's kind of like golf. You want the lowest score possible. And uh, I did not do that well, <laughs> but that's okay. Hopefully you guys will do better. Now there is a way to play this against someone. 
face to face. You can play your cousin, your sibling, your mom, aunt, uncle, dad, whoever. What you guys do, same thing we just did, you roll the dice and you keep going until player one, me, just rolled that seven and we couldn't erase it again, right? So we just had to add up my score. Now we would take all of those numbers that were down, so it would be back looking, instead of all our math, we would have just two. Give me a moment to erase. <laughs> and so the person who would go against us after we just erased everything would now try and roll those numbers. So they would try and get a seven, they would try and get a six, they would try and get a four, they would try and get a three. And then they would win because, hey, they filled them all up. We lost, but yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to play a new game. And honestly, you can play this for a while and not get too bored because there are so many different possibilities, so many different outcomes. And honestly, I kind of enjoy it because you can really, really hone your skills and start to understand and recognize the patterns when we get to see how different our roles are each time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys try it out and whew, have better luck than me. Good luck, have fun, and now let's do our positive action. Our positive action today is going to focus again on another big feeling or emotion. What specific emotion or feeling? Fear. So, we've all been scared. We've all felt fear. I want you to think of a time you were scared. And I want you to think about how it made you feel. Did you have any physical reactions? Did you start sweating? Did you get a little tense? Did you get nauseous? How did you feel? Because physical side effects are a real thing that happen when you get scared, when you get frightened. But fear isn't always a bad thing. Fear keeps us from doing silly things that could get us hurt, like going swimming in the shark tank at the aquarium. We would never do that because it is absolutely too scary. But fear also can keep us from doing a lot of cool things just because our brain has got it all kind of silly up there. But there are some things you can do to work towards not being scared of things anymore. Now, what I'm about to say won't be a fix-all for everything or everyone, but it's a step in the right direction. So, how do we face our fears? I suggest that you guys write your fear down. Think about it. Like, why am I afraid of this? What is really, what's so scary about it? I know one of my biggest fears are bugs, specifically spiders. Why are they so scary? Well, to me, they're scary because sometimes they can be poisonous, but not all of them are. So it's a little irrational for me to be scared of a daddy long leg because it's not poisonous. It's not going to hurt me. And then taking a step back and realizing that not every spider is going to be bad, I just have to do my research, kind of makes me feel better. Having the knowledge to know, hey, not everything is really going to attack me or bite me and be bad. It's just certain ones. So then I'm prepared for what happens with those certain bugs. When we begin to unpack our fears a little bit, they become a little less overwhelming and controlling. Think about what you're missing out on because you're so scared. Don't let it hold you back. Don't let it hold you back. Keep pushing through and don't be scared. All right, now let's go read our book. Are you guys ready? It's time to read Woo! James and the Giant Peach. If you guys remember, we just finished part nine and we're about to pick up part 10. Things were getting a little crazy at the end. Let me read you the last sentence we left off with because I feel like it's very important to what's gonna happen next. So let's jump right in. And then suddenly, while he was doing this, he happened to notice that right beside him and below him, close to the ground, there was a hole in the side of the peach. Part 10. It was quite a large hole the sort of thing an animal about the size of a fox might have made. James kneeled down in front of it and poked his head and shoulders inside. He crawled in. He kept crawling. This isn't a hole, he thought excitedly. It's a tunnel. The tunnel was damp and murky and all around him there was curious bittersweet smell of peach. 
The floor was soggy under his knees. The walls were wet and sticky, and the peach juice was dripping from the ceiling. James opened his mouth and caught some of it on his tongue. It tasted delicious. He was crawling uphill now, as though the tunnel were leading straight towards the very center of the gigantic fruit. Every few seconds, he paused and took a bite out of the wall. The peach flesh was sweet and juicy and marvelously refreshing. He crawled on for several more yards, and then suddenly, bang, on the top of his head, he bumped it into something extremely hard, blocking his way. He glanced up. In front of him, there was a solid wall that seemed, at first, as though it was made of wood. He touched it with his fingers. It certainly felt like wood, except it was very jagged and full of deep grooves. Good heavens, he said. I know what this is. I've come to the stone in the middle of the peach. Then he noticed that there was a small door cut into the face of the peach stone. He gave a push. It swung open. He crawled through and before he had time to glance up and see where he was, he heard a voice saying, look who's here. And another one that said, we've been waiting for you. James stopped and stared at the speakers. His face was white in horror. He started to stand up, but his knees were shaking so much he had to sit back down on the floor. He glanced behind him, thinking he could bolt back into the tunnel the way he'd came, but the doorway had disappeared. There was only a solid brown wall behind him. Oh my goodness. Part 11. James's large, frightened eyes traveled slowly round the room. The creatures, some sitting on chairs, others reclining on a sofa, were all watching him intently. Creatures? Or were they insects? An insect is usually something rather small, is it not? A grasshopper, for example, is an insect. So what would you call it if you saw a grasshopper as large as the size of a dog? As large as a dog, you could hardly call that an insect, could you? There was an old green grasshopper as large as a large dog sitting directly across the room from James now. And the old green grasshopper, there was an enormous spider next to him. And next to the spider, there was a giant ladybird with nine black spots on her scarlet shell. Each of these three were squatting upon a magnificent chair. On the sofa nearby, reclining comfortably, was a curled up position. There was a centipede and an earthworm. On the floor in the far corner, there was something thick and white and looked as though it might be a silkworm, but it was seeping soundly and nobody was paying attention to it. Every one of these creatures was at least as big as James himself and in the strange greenness light that shone down from somewhere in the ceiling, they were absolutely terrifying to behold. I'm hungry, the spider announced suddenly, staring hard at James. I'm famished, the old green grasshopper said. So am I, Ladybird cried. The centipede sat up straighter on the sofa. Everyone's famished. We need food, he said. Four pairs of round, black, glassy eyes were all fixed upon James. Here's a picture of all the bugs. As you can see, they are just chilling out in the middle of this peach. They got real fancy furniture. Also, real quick, did you notice that the centipede had a whole bunch of shoes on? <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> all right, jumping back in. <clears throat> The centipede made a wriggling movement with his body as though he was about to glide off the sofa, but he didn't. There was a long pause and a long silence. The spider, who happened to be a female spider, opened her mouth and ran a long black tongue delicately over her lips. Aren't you hungry? She asked suddenly, leaning forward and addressing herself to James. Poor James backed up against the wall, shivering with fright and too much, too terrified to answer. What's the matter with you? The old green grasshopper asked. You look positively ill. 
He looks as though he's going to faint at any second, the centipede said. Oh my goodness, you poor thing, said the ladybird. I do believe he thinks it's him we are wanting to eat. There was a roar of laughter from all sides. Oh dear, oh dear, they said, what an awful thought. You must have been frightened, the ladybird said so kindly. We wouldn't dream of hurting you. You're one of us now, don't you know? You're one of the crew. We're all in the same boat. We've been waiting for you all day long, the old green grasshopper said. We thought you were never going to turn up. I'm glad you made it. So cheer up, my boy, cheer up, the centipede said. And meanwhile, I wish you'd come over here and give me a hand with these boots. It takes me hours to get them off by myself. All right, we'll put our bookmark in before we start part 12. Oh my goodness. James ran into a whole bunch of insects in the middle of this peach as if this story couldn't get any crazier. Goodness gracious, I wonder what will happen next. Make sure to tune in and see what happens. Now, what are we doing? We are going to be figuring out our riddle. Who remembers what it was from the beginning of the video? Do ya? No worries, if not, I got you covered. Our riddle was people make me, save me, change me, and raise me. What am I? Did you figure it out? I thought at first, hmm, maybe a baby, a child, but no. You ready for the answer? It's money. See, you can make money, save money, change money, even raise money. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I loved getting to read and do some stuff with you, but now it's time for me to say my goodbyes. Thank you so much for watching.